Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today is day three of the Halloween week of videos, and today I'm going to talk about The Old Dark House, which was a universal horror picture directed by James Whale, who also directed such horror classics as Frankenstein, The Invisible Monster, and The Bride of Frankenstein. He's certainly probably one of the greatest horror directors of all time, and definitely one of the greatest horror directors of the 1930s. Now, The Old Dark House, which came out in 1932, October 20th, 1932, so right in time for Halloween, a group of friends, three friends, a couple, and this guy who's with them for some reason, and they're driving on an old country road and it's pouring down rain and they can't seem to get anywhere, and then there's a landslide and they're stuck, and they find an old house with the lights on, so they go there so they can then get some shelter for the night since they can't get out because of the landslide and the pouring down rain. They go into the house and discover a very strange situation with a creepy butler, a very old man who's very cryptic and strange and mysterious, and then his sister, and in this creepy old dark house, which only seems to have candlelight, so it looks even creepier and more mysterious. And then, in his American film debut, Charles Lawton and his girlfriend, or his wife, I think it's his girlfriend, show up because they have caught in a similar situation as the original three, and they have to spend the night in this old dark house. Now this is kind of a cliched plot, but in 1932 it wasn't that much of a cliched plot, at least in terms of the cinema. But James Whale seems to have kind of almost hokey fun with it anyway. I mean, James Whale was known for his dramatic framing and bringing his humor to his horror films. He always seemed to have fun with horror. That's what's made his two Frankenstein films and The Invincible Man live on so long, I think, is because they're so much fun. James Whale is one of the best directors at fun horror, and he has a lot of fun in this film. He lets the characters develop a lot. They're sitting around talking for a long period of time. There's a lot where it's not very creepy. Although he still has some very dramatic, very spooky imagery in this film, it's mainly kind of moody. I almost feel like this is if James Whale was going to do a mood piece. That's what you would kind of think of the old dark house as, because it has all his trademarks. It is very witty. You even have the character of the brother who seems to be a little gay. I think there's a little too much read into that, but it's somewhere there. It's not as there as Bride of Frankenstein. I think people make too big of a deal of that because of James Whale was gay, and obviously because of gods and monsters and things. There are certain elements of Bride of Frankenstein where that is there, but not as much in this film. This is a fun movie. I don't think it's that scary. You know, I like some of the dramatic framing. I like Boris Karloff as the butler, but it's just not a scary movie. There's some cool imagery, and I like the movie and the mood of it. I don't think it's a scary movie. Maybe I'm watching it wrong, thinking it should be. The Invisible Man or Frankenstein had some scary elements to it or things I could understand why it was scary at the time. And this film didn't do well at the box office in America, but it is a very British film. In fact, almost every character in this film is British except for like Gloria Stewart. It did well in England apparently, and that's kind of understandable because I don't think it's a film Americans would like as much just because it's moody, they're sitting around talking in his house for a while. I think if you were kind of like, oh, I've seen all these universal horror movies, I like James Bond movies, and then you see something like this. I, I was a little, I guess, disappointed because it isn't as fun and dramatic. It's a little slower, it's a little more moody, and I don't think that's what you were looking for from it. It's an interesting kind of artistic thing for him to do. A little stranger of a universal horror film. I wasn't as blown away by it, like Bride of Frankenstein, Frankenstein, Invisible Man. I love all those movies. I've been excited to see The Old Dark House for a long time, and I eventually saw it and I wasn't blown away, but I still, like, part of me, like, I would watch it again. So it, it's got kind of an interesting quality to it. And I'm glad it wasn't forgotten. This uh, director, Curtis Harrington, found the film and went out of his way to kind of help it get restored, put in a better condition, a better place than it was, because it was basically lost, uh, I think, from the 40s to the 60s, and he's the one who came out and got it and found the original negative and had Eastman House restore it and that was a really great thing. Another interesting bit of trivia about this, Gloria Stewart who is probably more famous now and understandably because of its popularity for Titanic, she was the old woman in Titanic. And this film actually has a connection to Titanic other than that she's in both. It's also that when James Cameron was watching the laser disc of The Old Dark House, he was listening to the commentary by Gloria Stewart, and he liked the commentary so much that he was like, we should cast her as the old woman in Titanic. So it's interesting, The Old Dark House is actually how she got cast 
in Titanic. This had the typical thing, apparently, when it came out. Its first week in New York, it had sold-out crowds, and then, like most horror movies, the second weekend, it totally drops off. That's, like, a normal thing for horror. Apparently, uh, everything I've read about horror box office is, like, the first weekend, everybody goes to see it, and then it usually falls off, unless it's a really good horror movie. And I think this is a little too subtle. There's a little too many nuances. There's a little too much mystery. I think uh, horror needs to be, for modern audiences, needs to be very direct, and this just really isn't. I would just say this is more of a mood horror piece, rather than, oh, from the guy who directed Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, Invisible Man. This is a very different turn from him. And James Whale was a very versatile director, and I love James Whale as a director, and I love those movies, and I've always wanted to see other things from him. It's interesting to see kind of more of a grown-up horror movie. I think horror maybe is a harder genre to grow up because people seem to have an aversion to that. It's a horror film that's really good at character development. That's one of the things that horror movies, even now, just like James Wan is particularly awful at it. Just, it's just terrible at building characters in a real way. Like, make them feel like real people almost. Not the most general, generic character development. And a lot of horror movies still to this day, and most of them, I think, have a huge problem with character development. Whereas this film, a lot of it is you're hanging out with these people, and you have great actors with Charles Lawton and Melvin Douglas and Gloria Stewart sitting around talking. And I think, you know, that speaks to him highly as a director. Maybe, sure, it's not like a hugely scary movie, but it is a good spooky movie. And I think, I guess I should be looking at more of what this film is trying to deliver to me rather than this director's reputation, which I think is what kind of holds this film back for a lot of people. It's based on a book called The Old Dark House, written by J.P. Prestley. Apparently it's more about World War I veterans coming home and their disillusionment with coming back after that war. There was a little bit of that, but not so much. You know, I feel like James Well wanted to have fun too much to get that down on that stuff, but he did have a little bit of it in there. The thing about James Well's films is there were always horror films I could watch when I was a kid, when I was in elementary school, and they're always fun horror movies, and there was always wit in them, and dramatic cinematography, and everything like that. Maybe this film isn't like that, but that doesn't mean it's a bad movie. It's still a cool, moody horror film. If that's what you're looking for, I think this is one of the better ones, and it's only 71 minutes, so you can't go wrong with that. So if you have seen The Old Dark House, and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments, and subscribe if you would like to. So the next video will be the day four of the Halloween week of videos, and I hope to see you tomorrow, and thank you for watching.